Well, would you look at the time? It's time for the Biscuit Basket. So, back-to-back games at a weekend. 10.30. Um, not my favorite thing in the world. Um, okay. I don't know about you. I missed, uh, I missed a lot of the Detroit game because uh, I need to sleep in that day. So, I missed quite a bit of it. So, uh, Sunday, though, I, I watched most of it. Um, and I, I feel like overall, like, considering it was a back-to-back on a weekend with morning games. Yeah. I think for the most part, like, it went pretty well. Um they, they look tired. Yeah, but the one thing I will say, though, is they walked it like they talked it. <laughs> is that is that it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the joke that you were hyping up before this episode? Yeah, it was not a good joke at all. Oh I, I, it, was, it was meant to be a bad joke, but it's like, it's a it's not a great song. No, no. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you see? Yeah. There is a Canucks fan who made a walk it like I talk it Canucks song. It's not good. And everyone on Twitter is so, so mad. Listen, I I respect the effort. You're just trying to have fun. Oh, the vibe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's for the vibes, but you're ruining the vibes. Yeah. And like we've seen that stupid Calgary Flame song that went viral like last year. The roof, the, the roof, roof, the roof, the roof, the roof. The roof. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that got clowned on for ages and it still is. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how, I mean, I don't think this, this song is going to get as big, but it hasn't. Yeah. And it won't. It won't. No. It is so, <laughs> did you see, did you see the line? Oh my God. It was like Zadorov, Susie, Myers and Cole, all are very, very tall. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is this? <laughs> oh my God. That, that, no, that's, that's someone who's going to make it. Oh yeah, no doubt. Did in, you, in, in in music? 100%. Did you um? Do you ever watch those like parody song videos that people used to make in, like 2011, like all the time? There were some good. I'm pretty ones, sure man. Clay Emu made one of them. Oh, I could he's, be he's wrong. He's made one with uh with Bo Horvat. I don't mind that one. Those are right. It was like 50 yeah. Horvat magic on the ice. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! I didn't that was, mind that. That was oh my god. When was that? Uh, like. 2015 ish probably a bit later oh but, man um, that's wild yeah there was some there's some good ones in 2011 i remember like there was one against the hawks where it was like uh oh, i don't remember which song there was it's a kesha song uh kesha song oh, yeah. tiktok wasn't wasn't that one it was um there was this i don't remember what the name was but they're like ole 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 it's like sounded like that I and mean, it's like is, that, the, is that not the bouncing souls Song? No, no, it's like it was a parody. Of, I, th- I think it was a Kesha song, but like, okay, it, it, it kind of slapped. <laughs> like, I don't like. That's the thing. Like, if you make a song like that, then sure, I'm okay with it. But well, you have gone on record saying that you loved the uh, Calgary Flames song too. Totally, <laughs> my favorite song of all time. No, no, Definitely you don't think it's no on terrible. record, on record. Yeah, this is true. This is totally true. No, what, what about it? Did you like so much? Well, you know they're gonna nothing he likes nothing (laughs) not nothing at all no i didn't know it's like it's it's very if you want a way to say it's very white i'm not gonna lie so um because uh it's 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 not great i'm not not gonna i'm not gonna say you're wrong you're not wrong yeah i mean it's about the calgary flames team in alberta it's the most like white boy thing i've ever seen in my life so have you considered that Zadorov, Susie, Myers, and Cole are all very, very tall. I have, but does that make them good? Ah, uh, no. Some of them are pretty good, though. Yeah, especially Carson Susie. I would argue two of them aren't, though. More on that in a bit. Yep. So the Canucks had a pretty good weekend. They did. It was a pretty successful. Ah, I think on form, three out of four points is pretty fair. Like I think. If you told me, if you showed me the stats for each game and then they walked out with three out of four, I'd, I would have been like, yeah, sure, that's fine. But I feel like it was reversed. I feel yeah. like they didn't have a good game against Washington, but they were they just looked tired, if I'm being totally honest. But against Detroit, I thought they looked really good. Uh, that third period was a bit iffy. But honestly, I mean, people are going to look at this and be concerned about how we're playing or how they're playing. I just. I did the whole parasocial thing again. Um, And, you know, people are going to think that this is like a really bad stretch or a frustrating uh, frustrating stretch. But honestly, I don't really view it like that. I don't either. Yeah. Also, like, 
I mean, you're never going to be thrilled with giving up a two goal lead in the third, right? But mm -hmm. I think all things considered, like they played pretty damn well. And I mean, overtime really came down to Hughes made one mistake and it cost them the game. Like, and then Jake Wallman did the stupid gritty. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you did y'all hear about that? We got the producers behind the the cameras here. Did y'all uh, nod your head if you saw that? The guy hit the gritty on the ice. No one saw that. I, I I recommend you go look at that video after after this because. Do you recommend watching that though? Is that something you need to see? Absolutely, dude. <laughs> people are gonna be mad about that. Like Canucks fans are gonna be mad about that. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I saw I saw a lot of Canucks fans being like, "Oh, they gotta go after Jake Wallman next game." Oh, and they I'm will. Like, they will. Yeah, they absolutely will. I don't I don't I don't really care if like a player showboats a little bit. Like, have fun, man. Like, it's the NHL. You're getting paid millions of dollars. And you're, your point the point of the sport is to entertain people. Like. Just have some fun with it. I don't see a problem with it, but I, He's I do done see it before. Like, yeah, but I, I definitely think they're, they're going to retaliate next game against them on Thursday. So. It was funny when it wasn't against our team, but now that it is against our team, it's just it's sacrilege. Apparently, yeah. has any Canuck done like any like outrageous celebration, like in recent memory at least? I can't think of anything. Uh, the Alex Burrow's like uh, the broken stick on the knee was awesome against Carolina. Um, yeah, when yeah. That, that's probably like one of my favorite, but that's like not even that egregious. Well, he did that twice too. Yeah, he did. Because the other time was against Detroit, Also against right? Detroit. Yeah. And that, that was one of them. Yeah, because that was against uh, when Detroit had that crazy home So they finally got their karma on us uh, <laughs> over, yeah. what, 12 years later? It's like you got, you got your goofy celly now. Now it's our turn. And it just so happened to be the gritty. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm okay all with for it. it. Stop yeah. laughing. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the show. I'm Sean. I'm Car. Uh, yeah, that's that's the intro. Yep. <laughs> uh, walk it like I talk a joke and talking about Jake Wallman doing the gritty. We are professionals. Yep. Absolutely. But the Canucks did just have a pretty successful weekend, all things considered. They're about to play Chicago tonight. Um, but one of the things this weekend that was really interesting was the fact that um, Rick Tockett completely changed up the line combos. And... That's going to happen again tonight. Yeah. The Swedish Invasion line is going to be making their debut tonight. So Niels Hoaglander got moved up with uh, Elias Pettersson and Elias Lindholm. El Elias and Elias. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember, Troy Stetcher didn't know how to say Elias Pettersson's name, so he said Elias Peterson. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I miss Troy Stetcher. Uh, good guess. Yeah, he was a good player. Yeah. But I'm really excited to watch the game tonight. Yeah. Well, we might miss some of it because we're recording this on Tuesday, um, the night of the Canucks and Blackhawks matchup, the last game of their road trip. But Niels Hoaglander is still on the top line, and this time instead of Pew Suter with Pedersen and Hoaglander, it's going to be Elias Lindholm. That's going to be a ton of fun. I, I, exactly. I, I am so, so ready for that. I mean, you're you're like one of the biggest Niels Hoaglander fans that I know. Oh, so. the, the moment he got drafted by the Canucks, I was his biggest fan. I, I, I thought there was no way they were getting him. Like, I thought he was going to be long gone in the first round and they gave him a second. <laughs> it's funny because... Uh, my friend Dom will uh, back me up on this. We watched, so he was living in Vernon at the time, and we watched the draft um, just over the phone, or I guess on PS4 in a party. And what actually happened was he got selected. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't remember exactly. Oh, I think I wanted Nick Robertson. I think right. that was the, the guy I wanted. And Nils Hoaglander, uh, Jim Benning read out his name. I'm pretty sure he pronounced it Niles Hoaglander. Yeah. And I thought to myself, wait, didn't he already get picked? Really? Yeah, I was like, I thought he had already been off the board. I thought he went in the first round. So I was like, oh, he hasn't yet. Yeah. I just assumed that he did. Yeah. So. I was surprised because I, I remember I woke up in the morning because the draft is like super early in day yeah. two. Uh, I woke up and I saw they took Niels Hoagland. I'm like, no way. No way they actually got this guy in the second round. Like, that's insane. And I remember we picked, Je or they picked Jet Wu uh, the year before in the second oh, round. Yeah. And that, at the time, uh, he just got called up. That, at the time, was like a very good value pick. And people were going nuts for it. So it was like two years in a row, they got a really good second round pick. Or at least for the time being. Um, but Holglander, uh, man, to me, I, I feel like he's fully deserving of this. I know he's shooting like 23.2% right now, which is absurd. And that's obviously going to cool down, but he's doing that in fourth line minutes. Yeah. I mean, he's easily been probably one of their better, like bottom six players for sure. Like, well, the other thing to consider too, is like, what was the, there were two main things in his game that really needed work this year. If he wanted to be a full-time player, 
It was puck management and it was defensive play. Mm -hmm. The defensive numbers have gone way up. Yeah. And the puck management has gotten better. Yeah. And now he's starting to pick his spots a little bit more. He's not just shooting from anywhere. He's not just, he's not passing it in defeat. He's getting good results because he's playing better. Mm -hmm. He's not going to shoot 23% forever, but he's playing good hockey and 16 goals at f all at five on five. Yeah. He's the best true. five on five scorer on the Canucks by a large margin. And they're, they're killing it. Like he's killing it, man. I'm so, I'm so excited to see what he can do on the top line. So I have a question for you. I know you've been in the camp of keep him in the bottom six because you don't want him to have as big of a role right now. So you can keep his AAV down for his next contract, yes. right? Are you still on that boat or you just say just ride him in the top ride six? Ride it. Okay, good. All day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. That's that's my mentality. I'm like, if he's if he ends up being like an, a regular top six player, then like whatever, you pay him whatever you he's yeah. gonna be worth. Because he's worth that, man. Like right now he's playing great and yeah. And like Pedersen really needs someone to really stick on that line with him. And like cause he's been juggling line mates the entire season. If Hoglander <laughs> can stick, like that's perfect. And he's gonna be a long term solution too. Lafferty, Pedersen, McKeev is a top like fifty line and expected goal differential. That's absurd. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't they, they just never scored. No. Like Which that. I mean on your top line, that's okay. Yeah. But uh well on your top line you'd hope that they're controlling play yeah but you gotta also score yeah so not great but the thing uh, man hoaglander like i said he's got 16 goals at five on five this year which is wildly impressive um but like you said about the about the hog plan that i laid out <laughs> on twitter a little bit ago the hog plan. basically what it was was you keep him in his current fourth or at the time his current fourth line role uh don't give him any power play time and just see if he can continue shooting the lights out. Mm -hmm. And then next year you bump up the ice time a bit, you give him power play two time and then you sign him for cheap. And then that's when you really start to the next year, you really start to bump his minutes. But if he's getting the minutes bump now, sure. Yeah. Like I've got no complaints. He's, he's a sick player. That goal he scored against Washington was disgusting. I kind of feel like just, just the way he plays, he's, he's like an underrated prick on the ice too. And I feel oh, like that's hundred percent. That that is going to be so nice in the playoffs too, especially if you play a team like Vegas as well, right? He might get outsized by a bunch of players, which is fine. <laughs> but like he he can he can piss people. But off that's there, the love. thing is, he yeah he's small. I think he's only five nine. Yeah, but he plays a lot bigger than that. Oh yeah, and I know that's like such a cliche thing to say, but it's true. It's kind of he just did, like Brad Marchand. Honestly. When was the last time Nils Hoaglander lost a board battle? Has he lost a board battle this year? I can't remember. Definitely. Yeah. But no, <laughs> uh, no, he's he is one of the best four checkers on the team by far. Oh, yeah. Garland, I think, is the only one who and it's funny because he's also short. Yeah. But I think he's the only one who I'd say is for sure better. Hmm. Dakota Joshua as well. But Hoaglander, it's it's the speed, it's the tenacity, dude. You you watch the highlights in Sweden, he'd get suspended. Oh yeah, dude, like twice too. Like he, one he for high elbow. Mis, he was Mister Flying Elbow. Yeah, the <laughs> flying insane. forearm. That's insane. No like, man, he was he was he, he, underrated prick. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, he's a freaking wrecking ball, man. Like, can I take a few of those guys? Yeah, and I I feel like um, I don't remember who mentioned this when he was drafted, but somebody was saying he reminds them of Brad Marchand a little bit, just like the way he plays. Cause he's just like undersized guy. Who's kind of a prick. I don't think he's going to be like Brad Marchand, but like that kind of mold, you know what I mean? So do not use the Brad Marchand comparison in front of me because <laughs> I will take that and I'll run. You give me an inch. I'm taking a mile. Oh with yeah, that. dude. But this is a player to get excited for. I think like you think this, we, have, we you think they got a player here or what? I mean, as long as they don't like trade him, that's for someone at the deadline, which I really hope they don't do. But I think he's a player. I think he's just a guy who can fit well in this lineup, like wherever you put him. So you keep him for this year, you keep him for next year. And if all goes well, you sign him long term and he's a regular NHL player for you. I hate to sound biased here because I say this a lot when players are shooting the lights out and I'm like, ah, well, they're going to slow down. And there's no like there's no doubt in my mind that Nils Hoaglander is going to slow down. Oh, yeah, probably. But that's the shooting percentage. Yeah. If he gets more minutes, he plays with better players, he gets more opportunity to score more goals, the shooting percentage might dip and his goal totals might not really change. That's the thing. He I'm, still could very well because he's on pace for 25 goals. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing with Pedersen, too, like it should go up your goal totals. So those two are best friends, too. So they better they better have some sort of like power of friendship. My little pony connection going on or something.
My little, that's a great reference to bring up. Uh, the, that's producer, not, the producers liked that one. Yep. Yeah, that's that's not that's not the verse that came to my mind, but I love it. That's that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the Milo French or, or, what do you call it? The Milo friendship line or what? Milo Pony Friendship is magic. My okay. Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Is that like the movie? That's a show. It's show. Yeah. Oh, it's the show. Oh, I thought was there not a My Little Pony movie? There's several. 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 Okay. okay. Oh God, the over <laughs> the oversaturation of My Little Pony. That will be a, another podcast uh, episode. That'll don't worry about that one for now. This is not a podcast about bronies. I swear. Oh, <laughs> could be. I mean, we could do a brony episode. I you, know nothing about My Little Pony. I don't either. Maybe that's how we get into it. Shoot. Oh, so producer Sophie is pointing at herself. She wants to do the My Little Pony episode. Get me on. Get you on. Brony. <laughs> The I'm Brony down. Show. The Brony Show. Oh, I feel I'm like I feel like I, I was gonna make like a joke, but I don't know if it's appropriate for the the camera. So we'll we'll leave it. Okay. But, but the other, hey man, there there are two other parts of that Swedish invasion line, and you're not gonna believe this. No, they're both Swedish. No way. Okay, don't act that surprised. Dude, I didn't know though. Yeah, you did. I did, yeah. <laughs> the both name Elias too, so. Well, he's, well, oh, well, it's both spelt the same way. Yeah. You gotta pronounce it differently. True, true. Can we talk about Pedersen and how, even though he's not even playing his best hockey, he still has 69 nice points. <laughs> Tied for fifth in the league with his current teammate, JT Miller. Yeah. This guy's unreal, man. He's, I think when it's all said and done, he will be easily the best player to ever play in Vancouver. It's not I, even close. Uh, it'll be close, but. I also wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year he's the highest paid player in, in the league. So it's no, possible. he's taking a team friendly deal. Eight by nine point five. Canucks will be a dynasty, yeah. and uh, nothing matters anymore. Yep, <laughs> it's totally gonna happen. The, end of episode, all he, right all there. Said, yeah. That's it. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't care what he gets paid at this point. I'm like, this guy blank is, check, dude. Yeah, just, blank check. It doesn't matter. Caps going up, like. You'll be well, fine. I mean, it matters. It does. But you, you do need uh, like it matters that you just have this guy on your team. That's all. I'll say. But I don't think it's going to be some outrageous number. I no. have a feel like he's talked a lot, and I know this is like this is best case scenario here, but he's talked a lot about wanting to win. Yeah, he wants to have like the Michael Jordan legacy, and like he wants he looks up to Kobe Bryant, like guys who are proven winners. Mm -hmm. He's going to want a lot of money. Oh yeah, but I don't think he's going to take the absolute most he can get if the Canucks end up going far yeah. if he thinks that there's a chance that this could last long term especially if like dude phil peronik's gonna want a lot of money yeah yeah i think he's gonna one. want too much money that's that's the problem i i don't i i mean you and i have talked about this off camera like i don't know if that's worth giving him but they, uh, they, they yeah. may just do it though so like that's not really under control but but about Pedersen, back to him um the, the thing is last year he genuinely should have been in the conversation for the Selkie, in yeah. my opinion. I thought I thought he was that good defensively, mm. two-way, not just defensively. He put up 100 points, um, which obviously is incredible. This year, he's going to definitely surpass the 102-point plateau that he hit last year. But the thing is, is if, like, if you watch Pedersen play right now, even just throughout the season, he doesn't look like near the player he was last year. Right? I, I mean, at least I don't think so. Mm -hmm. He's obviously been probably a top five centerman in the league, but there's another level there. Yeah. His defensive results have even dropped off significantly too, and he's not controlling play near at the rate that he was in years prior. So if you're getting 69 points in... 52 games i think he's played so far yeah. and you're not even getting his him at his best that's terrifying yeah it's absurd like i mean there's been games this season two where he's looked like not very good like terrible especially like the last like three games i mean boston no one scored D so detroit he looked really good i mean yeah. i know he had three points but that was a game where i he, there was genuinely like he was a lot better there but that's the thing though like even like in a lot of the games where he doesn't look that good like he's still producing like, this, it's absurd but that's it like 
we're gonna see him sooner rather than later. I would bet on it. Like I'd easily bet money on it. If if him, Hoaglander, and Lindholm can get chemistry, that line will like that line has a chance to be really, really dominant. I think he just needs like some linemates to stick with, like I was saying before. Like if he can find some consistency with linemates, and I'm hoping this lineup that they have now is like what sticks for him, because if it does work, like it's it works really well. Like Lindholm can do a lot for them defensively. Yeah. Hoaglander can provide offense. I mean, so can Lindholm as well. But I mean, if they get something that sticks, I think he's going to keep flying even more than he is right now. Well, and that's it. It's like, I don't even think he's flying. I mean, yeah. obviously the production jumps off the page. Yeah. But in terms of like actual underlying, like just the raw data, like without any context, it doesn't look as impressive as years prior. And I think I don't because there was a bit of an injury or at least a setback last year, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I think so. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't think it was like very long. But there was one. Uh, or, or sorry, it would have been last year. It would have been early this year, uh, early this season. Right. But I know that um, there, especially near the start of the year, he really wasn't looking like himself. And mm-hmm. I don't think he's fully gotten back there yet. Um, I will say when when the lotto line was together, mm. he, I mean, it was automatic. You oh, put yeah. him you put him with high end talent. He's going to he's going to torch the earth like yeah. that's how it works. But and that's why I really hope Lindholm sooner rather than later really starts to pick it up, because if I'm being real, I haven't really loved him to start his Same. Canucks tenure. But yeah. um, hopefully they catch lightning in a bottle with uh, those that that three uh that trio sorry um because it i think it would really really help him out and lindholm like i know i said i haven't been a big fan of him lately but like that should work i don't see why it shouldn't or i don't see why it couldn't work i don't know i think also like you want lindholm to work with petterson for sure because like i feel like those two can just bring out a lot in each other because one thing i think for, for sure is like Lindholm's good defensively, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like if Patterson can get some help defensively for a lot of his responsibilities, then that just makes his job a lot easier. Yeah, he doesn't and have to clean up the mess all by himself. Yeah, exactly, which has been the case a lot this season, it felt like. But well, like, Mikheyev is a really good um, defensive winger as well. Right. But he doesn't have near the offensive capabilities, especially the puck-moving capabilities, to, you know transition cleanly out of the zone if, if he's the one who has the puck in transition right like he is all the speed in the world actually well the acl injuries kind of set that back yeah but there are limitations to having him and petterson together hoaglander the puck management's gotten way better the defensive results have gotten way better that's gonna also i think i think that also has helped already in terms of and, and adding lindholm as well is really gonna benefit i think mm-hmm. um to those two um, but but you saw with Pew Suter too. Like Pew Suter gets results no matter who he plays with. Oh, yeah. And he also gets them results as well. He's the prototype plug and play guy. He is the perfect value player for what he brings. Yeah. 1.6 million is so stupid, by it's the way. It's ridiculous, man. It's such a good cost for another year or two. Like that's absurd. I know I've told you this many times, but I remember being in my kitchen. I think it was doing dishes or something. And this is right around the time when a lot of people were talking about the Pedersen. Um, uh, contract and if he was going to sign when he was going to sign it was it was in the dog days of summer stories were um, you know pe- journalists were desperate yeah um, so and fans were just trying to start conversation but I remember getting the notification from the Canucks Twitter account seeing general manager Patrick Elvin has announced that and I was like oh there it is yep. and I saw that it was Pew Suter on a two year deal for 1.6 mil AAV and I remember being even happier that it, that was the signing yeah. instead of Pedersen because I feel I, like I still think the Pedersen signing is going to come I yeah. really wouldn't worry about that but Pew Suter like I'm so over the moon that the Canucks ended up getting him and how he lasted to late August or mid August still baffles me to this day I well, don't know even when I saw it because they when they announced the signings they announced the total of the the cap it right so, yeah, and they announced like it would be as well a three point two. My math is yeah. correct. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, oh wow, that's a really good deal. And I was like, wait, it's cheaper than that for the AV? Like, you're what? telling me that that's the total value of his two year contract? Yeah, that's absurd. No, like, it's it's stupid. Yeah, it's pure value, and that's why like the Canucks. The, the thing you got to give them credit for is their pro scouting. Yeah, they've nailed 
every bet for the last, I think, probably since the Dakota Joshua bet. Yeah. They've kind of just kept hitting and hitting and hitting. Well, Seneca was a mess. Well, but yeah, for sure. But you're whatever. not going to hit on all of them. But the other thing, too, is just like they've been able to like develop not not as much, um, I guess, recently uh, like younger guys, but they've been able to develop like players in like really good, like everyday NHL players like Noah Juleson. Like this guy, yeah. this guy was cooked at the start of the year. And like now he's like. He's a guy like you can put in every night if you wanted to. Who knew that a a development staff, like a good development staff, could actually really benefit your organization? Who uh, I news to me, I don't know. Yeah, it's been years since we've had that. Even like when Mike Gillis was around, like they weren't crazy great at that. No, they were awful at it. Yeah, they, there was like, look, okay, the 2011 team. If you look at in house talent that was developed, um. In terms of, okay, from 2011, we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. All the guys who were in-house were the Sedins, Kessler, Burroughs, Bieksa, um, like, Alex Edler. Yeah, like Yannick Hansen. Way before 2011. Yeah. There was, like, no young talent on that team. Yeah. That had been, de- like, previously developed. Hamus was a signing... <clears throat> um, they traded for Rafi, or I think they signed Rafi Torres. Oh no, was it a trade? I don't, I, I don't remember. remember um, they brought in a lot of the depth pieces, which is funny because that's, that's kind of what they're doing now. Yeah. But at least you have a guy like Niels Hoaglander, who, just as an example, Jet Wu just got called up. Uh, hope, we'll see how he does. I don't think he's playing tonight. No, he's not. He's scratching okay. tonight. I think they might give him a, a look, though. They should, I feel Maybe like. Maybe against Detroit. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could probably swap out. Probably Mark Friedman's the guy that goes out if you do. But, but Mark Friedman, like, I have all the time in the world for that guy. Yeah, no doubt. We don't honestly. really need to go too in-depth about Mark Friedman. Yeah. I don't feel like. That's true. He is, he's just the prototypical, like, good depth defenseman. Yeah. Um, can provide surplus value. Here's the thing, though. So Mark Friedman is currently filling in for Nikita Zadorov. Um, oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, he's suspended. Yeah, he's got another game, right? He's, how many games was it? I don't actually remember. Two. Two. Okay. So this is this will be the last game of his yeah. suspension. Um. So do you actually want him back? I mean, obviously he's going to be back. Trade him. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I'm kind of in that boat, too. I'm not going to lie. I know that Canucks fans are going to be really upset. Um, or some Canucks fans already are upset mm-hmm. at this discourse of the Canucks potentially trading Nikita Zadorov, but why not? Yeah. He hasn't been good. I I said this uh, previously where I was like, if you're going into the playoffs with Zadorov and Myers on your on your defense core, you're just asking for a disaster because. I think you can have one. I don't think you can have both, especially if they're on separate yeah. pairs because you're just giving yourself a liability at that point. I, I can tell you what. Um, I, I think Myers isn't as good as Zadorov. Yeah. Like, full stop. Especially, at like, dude, he makes $6 million per year. This is his final year of the, the contract. But Zadorov at 3.8, I think, is a little much. But yeah. at least there's value there. Like, historically, has been a pretty good shutdown, like, bottom pair guy at the yeah very least and he also can just provide fireworks by throwing the biggest hits ever but um i'd say the first few months of him being here i thought he looked pretty good and it was right about until um the all-star break like just before then where he really started to look not as good yeah like, and, and, and again the raw analytics will show you that he also has like his plays dipped considerably since then. Yeah. And Rick Tockett knows it. Like he's benched him a couple times. Oh yeah. I think he, he should at that point. Cause just, if you're having a player out there who's not doing anything for you, like bench him, like I don't see a point in playing him and it's just, I don't know. I don't, Sidora is fine, right? Like he off he gets big hits. People love that. My dad loves him for that reason. Like it's insane. <laughs> My dad loves him for that reason. Yeah. But I think at some point you have to sit there and realize like, does this player help us win hockey games? And I'm just not sure that he does. I mean, I do think he does, but um, I, I don't think. Listen, there's going to be teams at the deadline who are going to be looking for a six foot six left handed defenseman. Yeah. Who can absolutely kill people like there's always, always a market for that. And I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like what the potential return could be, because I know that they got a third and a, or Calgary got a third and a fifth for Zadorov. 
but because it's the deadline, because GMs become more desperate because the prices go up. Mm -hmm. I could see a team like throw in a second round pick at the Canucks for a guy like Zadorov because six foot six defenseman as, as much as I don't think height matters at all in terms of a player's quality. Some GMs still do. Yeah, absolutely. And it's regressive and it's, it's BS and all, in all honesty, but it, it's true. Like you see every year, at least one super tall defenseman get overpaid way too much money in free agency. There was that one year where Eric and Branson and Ben Sherratt both got over 4 million per year That's absurd. on multi-year deals. How? Uh, I don't know. At this point in their careers too, like it doesn't make sense. No. Um, so I do, I do think there's value in keeping Zadorov. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Cause I do think he's better than what he's shown over the last few weeks. But if there is a market for him, you absolutely move him and you yeah. try and upgrade. You don't just move him to move him. You try and get like, I don't know, a Nick Sealer or a Sean Walker or a Chris Tanev or yeah. someone of the sort that I think personally will provide way more value than Zadorov does. Yeah. I think, if we're betting on this, I feel like he'll probably end up staying on the team most yeah. likely. But yeah, I agree. If there is a market for him, you explore it. And the funny thing is when when you think about like teams who could go after him, right? Mm -hmm. um, who was the last guy to acquire mm -hmm. Nikita Zadorov? <laughs> is that Mr. Brad Tree Living? It might be Mr. Brad Tree Living. And oh, it kind of seems like they need a defenseman. No, they've been looking... Uh, apparently they want wrist to line in. Like apparently that's oh, yeah. the other targeting. Apparently the Canucks are kind of sniffing around him too. I don't, but. I don't buy too much into that. <laughs> yeah. They're probably just poking to see yeah. what's what's there, but I don't think the Canucks are going to get wrist to line. And now that's going to, that's going to end up on like a TikTok in like two weeks. Just that sound bite of oh, me yeah. saying that. And then they're going to overpay for him. And then I'm going to look like an idiot, but <laughs> yeah. that that's two weeks from now's problem. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I could see Brad for living trading for Zadorov because I, he is a history of not doing a whole lot at the deadline, so yeah. we'll see. But the thing is also, like, there was rumors that he was trying to get Zadorov and Tanev in a deal, but that fell through, and that's why the Canucks were able to get Zadorov. So it's very possible if they really want him. I think if they swing for Tanev and they miss, mm -hmm. Zadorov will be, like, their backup plan. Uh, and that, Or maybe, like, a Nick Sealer or a Sean Walker. Like, there are... Def the, the market for defensemen, like, second-pairing caliber D-men, it's pretty big this year. Yeah. So, although I don't think Zadorov is in that tier, but because of the size and the physicality, like, there's always going to be a market for that. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I don't think they should, in a perfect world, keep both. Yeah. But... They, I mean, I don't, I don't really mind if they do. Like, yeah, you could right. have, you could have your bottom nine D of Cole, Susie, Zadorov, Myers, and those are four just hulking monsters on your back end. Like, that's God. intimidating. It is. I'll be real with you though. Like, I kind of want to see Noah Jules in his lineup at some point though. Like, he's been playing well <sighs> yeah. enough. Yeah, it's it's nice watching a defenseman who doesn't get beat wide like Myers does all the time. <laughs> well, it's because he's not chasing hits anymore. Yeah. Like Noah Juleson was getting flamed in this market for so long, be uh, at the, especially at the start of the year, because he was always out of position because he was always looking for the big hit. And then he got sent. I th did he get sent down? Uh, or no, he, so, no, he stayed he on the active roster, but yeah. he never, ever got playing time. Mm. And then the moment he went back into the lineup, everyone was like, oh, crap. And then just slowly but surely, he's just kind of he's completely revamped his game. It's, yeah. it's really it's like, thank God. Yeah. Cause he, like genuinely he was unusable for the first leg of the, of the beginning of the year. At least yeah. you also mentioned um, how he's going for big hits. It seems like now he's just figuring out how to time them better. Like that hit he had against uh, the Detroit game. Oh my God. Well, that's And that's <laughs> why Zadorov hasn't been as good too, because I've been noticing that he's been trying to go for the massive hits. Like, dude, just play defense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Physicality has value. Yeah. There are people who value it way higher than others. I don't value it very much at all, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a bonus. But that's it. If you can time your hits right, mm -hmm. don't chase them. That's why there's so many like really tall 
physical defensemen. Like that's why there's always a market for them. But then you look at their numbers and it's like, oh, these guys are terrible. Why are they making? Why are they making four point five million a year? Eric and Branson, yep. Ben Sherratt, all those guys. It's because in the playoffs you see them lay that big hit and you're like, yeah, I want some of that. And then. The pro- only problem is, is they're surrendering five goals every two games because they suck. Yeah, they don't really do much outside of the big hits. So they, they're easier to walk around, which I kind of like Tyler Meyer is put. Um, but yeah, it just I, they, they have a purpose. I understand that. Like yeah. big hits are they're definitely useful in the playoffs, especially when you're trying to get under a player's skin. But you can only have so much of that. We'll see. Like the Canucks can do a few things. Like I don't think they're done. I think they're going to no. try to continue to add. And I mean, Phil Kessel was in Vancouver. Like w- w- we just got the notification like minutes before we started recording that, yeah. that Phil Kessel's in town to meet with the Canucks. I don't really see the fit. I don't either. It's probably going to be league men. Hey, you're our thirteenth forward. He's not a play driver. He's not good defensively, but he could still kind of shoot it, and he's still a good passer. So it's like. If one of the top six guys gets hurt, you maybe put him with Pedersen like in a pinch. I don't see him playing a fourth line role there. If he's being brought in, it's like, oh, Lindholm's hurt. Let's put him with uh, let's put Kessel with Pedersen and Hoagland or whoever they decide. Mikheyev, maybe Mm -hmm. um, to try and see if you can squeeze out a little bit of value there. Yeah. Uh, which is fine, yeah. but I would rather them use their cap space more wisely. Yeah, I, I kind of agree on that. I mean, definitely doesn't hurt ever getting a free player, right? So yeah. you could definitely benefit from that. And plus, like, maybe not as much now because he's a bit older, but he's a fast player and they could always use some speed in their lineup. So yeah. easy, like, plug and play player if any injuries happen. But mm-hmm. again, I don't I don't see the fit, but you know what, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. So obviously this is a very Canucks-centric show. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the main focus. But we do kind of want to talk about other NHL stuff. And one of the things we discussed in the workroom before the show was... I asked you what your Stanley Cup final prediction is this year. And right. I know that it's only like just over the midway point of the season, but this is interesting. So this by this, I mean, you can't predict how each series is going to go. But I, I'm looking at it as who's the best team in each conference. Mm-hmm. That's my guess for now. But once the playoffs actually start, I'll have a better prediction. Did you have any teams in mind? You don't even have to name like the two you think just teams that you think are legitimate cup contenders in each conference i will at, at least i will i will say one from each conference so okay um you might have the same as mine i'm fully be. prepared yeah okay so for my eastern pick i will say one thing it would have been carolina <laughs> if they had some Dude. consistent goaltending i which can't they don't. i'm the biggest carolina hurricanes defender and i can't even pick them I, yeah I, I can't do it their goaltending has been a mess i mean kochekov's fine but he's still a rookie like he's not gonna bring you to a cup most likely at least and they don't have enough like high-end scoring talent yeah like aho is sick jarvis can be really good mm. um and sveshnikov i think is a world beater who yeah. hasn't really been given full reign to do world beater stuff because of Brendan Moore's system. Mm-hmm. I think the system re- that they play holds them back, but at the same time, they generate so much. Yeah. So it's like maybe the dam is about to break. I thought it might have been last year, but I don't know. So I, I-, I get it. Yeah. Though. It's like they're they're just th- they're close to like being like a favorite, but for me, it's I think it's far and away the Florida Panthers right now. Like there's there's no <laughs> other team that can like. Damn it. That's, that's my pick. Yeah, that, I figured. I figured. Because, like, up and down their line, like, we were looking at their lineup earlier today, and it's like, man, they're just they're just solid all around. Like, yeah. there's not many holes there. And plus, like, the style they play is just so well fitting for playoff hockey, too. Well, they, they've all bought in. Yeah, exactly. Maurice has a system. They've all bought in. And and the thing is, is you may look at Bobrovsky and question it, like, oh, he's, he's average. Like, but... Darcy Kemper won the Stanley Cup behind a really good team, and he had like one working eye. Oh god! In twenty twenty, you remember that? Yeah. He had a, a a stick went through his mask, into his eye, and he still played for the pretty much the remainder of the playoffs, and they won the cup. Yeah. And he was he was good. Yeah. Because he just had to be average. I don't I don't see, I don't know who's gonna really beat the Florida Panthers. Like I just don't see a team who can really match their style i guess and like just play a full seven games against carolina is the only team that i would bet against i do not buy boston 
no, at all. No, I didn't buy Boston last year. I don't buy them again this year. So, which like I mean, they we, shouldn't be. We will be year. let down again. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I'm I mean, actually sorry. We weren't let down last year. What am I talking about? They got they got beat in the first round. Yeah, which they should have won if they just played well, yes. Raymond. But um, but I don't. Buy, I didn't buy them winning the cup. Oh yeah, same. I don't think they I had the Leafs winning the cup last year. Oh, you never. You you gotta learn from your past mistakes. Oh, but you can't do that. Wait, no. Oh, I can't remember if I had the uh, Hurricanes or the Leafs. I think it was. Okay. I think it was the Leafs. But anyways. Anyways, yeah. So who's your team in the West? <sighs> I hate to say it because I know they're gonna get. He's probably, gonna say the same ones as me. This I is think insane. so. Insane. Uh, I think they're gonna add a defenseman at the deadline, and it's gonna probably put them a bit over the top. It's the Edmonton Oilers. Shoot. Because um, how do you bet against Connor McDavid and Leon Drysaddle? Like they're they're too damn good. Well, their depth is also good. like their supporting cast is so good. I the only thing I don't like about this team is Darnell Nurse. Like everything <laughs> else, I'm like, but he's good being, I think he's also being held back by Cody Cece. Yeah, like, he's not help. been good. like, dude. Cece's been trash this season. <laughs> That's gotta be one of the worst pairings ever. the one thing i'll say because i totally agree with you like the oilers control play better than any other team in the league maybe besides the hurricanes yeah but i do think the oilers are probably the best um the one thing i will say is the west is such like it's literally just pick your it doesn't matter like there are like five legitimate foes from the west i think vancouver edmonton dallas colorado and then vegas and then honestly I'm just very low on Winnipeg. Yeah. So I, I will throw them in there. Like there's six legitimate contenders in the West, but I do, I, I, I do think Winnipeg is like just slightly below yeah. all those teams. Although I'm not even that high on Vegas anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit higher on Vegas just because the way they play just fits playoff hockey, like way better than like most teams and they can just be pricks because <laughs> that's can, what they are. The Canucks have a very similar defensive setup where it's like, they've got a puck mover on the right, a puck mover on the left, and then a bunch of huge guys to fill out the bottom of the, the yeah. defense who can also move the puck. Yeah. And like, like that's like, dude, Braden McNabb is sick. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. Um, and other guys like Zach white clouds really good. I'm, really high on nicholas hag yeah i think I like he's him. really good um that's why i buy vegas yeah like i i totally i totally see it and i mean they just won the cup i, yeah. I jack eichel is a world beater too yeah so there's no one talks about him enough i feel like he's not gonna eichel? yeah he had that game against the canucks earlier this year that made me totally question if he was maybe like because he was matched up against the Miller line who at the time was still putting up really good, like really solid, solid enough results yeah. at five on five. And they got absolutely dummied by uh Barbashev, Eichel and stone. Yeah. And that made me kind of question if that was like a top five line in the league. And then I looked at the numbers and no, they weren't. No. They just had a really good game. I mean, yeah, but just something about that team. No, you know, they just, they know how to win. And that's the thing that's kind of scary. That's the one thing. Like, if Canucks go against them in playoffs, like, I think they can beat them. But that is a little bit of a tougher matchup, I feel like. But yeah. going back to the Oilers, though, um, it's kind of funny because at the start of the year, I wasn't as high on them as everyone else was. Because I don't know what it was, but I was just like, something just doesn't feel right about this team. Like, something just doesn't convince me that they're a cup contender. And then I see that long win streak they go on. And just how like purely dominant they are. I mean, they weren't playing the greatest teams either. But Edmonton, yeah, no. Yeah. But just the fact that they were able to crawl out of that hole at the start of the season, I'm just like, they didn't crawl out of that hole. They exploded oh, out yeah. of that hole. They won 16 in a row. Oh like, yeah. That's, and you know what's really funny too about that? What's that? They barely gained any ground on Vancouver. No, they didn't. Because Vancouver is just really good. They kept winning. But. I, listen, I've I, I've been waiting for the regression. Yeah. I've been I've. By like game forty one, I remember being it was it was that road trip where they went to New York. Yeah, and they swept New York, all the New York teams, and I remember thinking to myself because I remember still being really skeptical about um, if this team was actually legit, and I saw that and how they were playing, and I was like. No, they're they're legit. They're this legit. is it. And then they've continued. They haven't been playing world beater hockey, but they're th these are just normal hockey games that they're playing. They're they're getting the bounces against them now. There was a goal uh, in the Washington Washington game where uh, Ovi 
tried to pass it in front and hit a Canucks skate and went in. Yeah. Still won the game. Yeah. Like they're getting the bad bounces and are still winning because they're good. Yeah. Let's all buy their stock now. Let's do it. And I mean, every team is going to have a bit of like a rough patch throughout the season. Even if like they're still winning games and they just don't look the greatest, like that's going to happen with every good team. Like even... I mean, I think Colorado is still kind of consider a contender, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they oh, yeah. they've been really on and off this season. Like, haven't looked great in some games, have looked unbelievable in some other games, but they're gonna be just fine. I think the same thing with Canucks. I know that there are a lot of people that aren't very high on Dallas, but I am very, very high on Dallas. Yeah, I like Dallas too. That's another. Team <clears> I think. I think if it's a honestly, I'm gonna be totally real. Uh, my Cup Finals predictions. I think the team that comes out of the West is going to be one of Vancouver or, or uh, Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Like it'll be one of those two. I think if those two face in the second round, that is the Western conference final. Whoever wins that is going to go to the finals. Easy. Like that, that's my pick. Well, so the central kick rocks, none of you guys matter. But the thing is with Edmonton is they don't have a playoff song like we do. So they did last year. Did they? Yeah. Which one was that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't nearly as bad as the Calgary one, okay. which isn't nearly as bad as the Vancouver one. Yeah. We're so screwed. Yeah. Don't buy the stock. I lied. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Be sure to check out our uh, the Evolution YouTube channel, TikTok, Twitter, all that stuff. We'll be posting clips basically throughout the week. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, go, Cox, go. That's all I got to say. Oh, you homer. Hell yeah. All right. This is, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Take it easy.